This is a painting that I did a little while ago. Um, it's just a tryout really, and I showed it to you um, in the process of uh, producing another video, um, which uh, we did together. And uh, these two, this is the two that I did, and I still can't make up my mind which one I'm going to show you now. Um, but I'm going to do the background anyway, and we'll see what happens. I think I might do this one because I'm not feeling like any detail or any whimsy. This one here, I think we'll do this as a whimsical one next week. So look out for that next Wednesday when we do Whimsical Wednesday. And today this is going to be um, uh, Fall Over Friday, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm feeling like, you know, I want to just go and lie down in a darkened room at the moment. So let's... Uh, Let's move the camera up a little bit. I've got my Kuretake paints here, which is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to start um, demonstrating the use of these brushes, which is my um, yet to be produced, but soon to be created set. This is a tester um, of Kuretake brushes. This is, uh, what am I saying? Craftamo brushes, Craftamo collaboration. This is a size 14 um, round nylon with a quite long, um, uh, you know, hairy bit on the end here, longer than perhaps the average, which is what I chose because these are all done by collaboration um, according to um, my request. So they'll be available on 1st of November, hopefully they should be. If you go to Craftamo's page, webpage, craftamo.com, you can uh, put your name down to be told when they become available. So I'm using this brush and I'm just going to paint using the uh, Kuretake, yes, I do mean Kuretake colors, starting with the lightest yellow at the top here. And then I'm going to just literally um, paint orange and other, and browns and things like that, and reds as a uh, autumn, autumnal scene. Um, Yes, and there's, this is a bit of purple, put a bit of purple in there, um, and a bit of reddish, because sometimes you get that, don't you? Whatever colours you fancy, you can put in, obviously. This is a nice dark, rusty colour, and we just don't think about it too much, because as soon as you start to think about it, it all goes wrong, and it's best if you don't, so therefore it's best if you don't. It's a good idea if you sit down. I'm thinking about buying myself or having for my birthday a new chair because I need a chair that's comfortable. We all do, don't we? Um, so let me see. There's some brown here. Let's put some brown in. I don't want this to go too uh, dull and I don't want too many holes. So I'm going to try and make sure because this is something I do. I know I tend to um, paint and leave holes on the paper, come back to it later and you think, oh gosh, I've left holes all over the place, but anyway, so you will, I, the, when I did this, this was done with um, the, <coughs> uh, what do you call them, the Viviva colour sheets, and their colours are nice and vivid, Vividiva, uh, but I didn't want to use that this time, so I have to sort of try out different things. And I'm using, um, this is Meaden's watercolour paper. It's 100% cotton. It's pretty good, I think. Well, that's a nice brown. Some of that down near the front. And it does all smush in together. So whatever happens, happens. And yeah, we have to let it all just do its own thing, don't we? So I'm just going to do this, and then once, once, I, once I've got to the end here, I'm going to leave it to dry while I go and have lunch. Shall I put some nice... This set, of course, doesn't have that fantastic chocolate colour um, that the, the Viviva set has, but it does have some nice maroons and things like that. This is pretty good. When this dries, it will probably have some runbacks and things like that, but it really doesn't matter because we're going to paint over. And this is the idea is this is just a forest of colors. 
an autumn or fall forest background. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll be back soon. So this is dry now and um, it's quite a nice background, isn't it? And I, I think at this stage, I would suggest to some of you that it might be a good idea just to do the whole thing again so that you've got a spare one. Um, because if what you do next doesn't please you, then you might get upset because you don't have um, a sort of fallback position. But um, that's just an option. And um, I'm sort of looking at it and I'm thinking, I'm not quite sure what to do. So what I did, uh, rather than do another one, um, I got a piece of tracing paper. And I have this idea of doing something like this, but putting some houses as well as some sort of abstract um, trees in the foreground. And I don't know how this is going to work out, but that's kind of my plan at the moment. So I've got here a Poetic uh, brush pen. You could use any kind of um, fine liner or brush pen or pencil, anything, anything at all. I've just decided I'd use this. And then I'm going to sort of identify the, um, the shapes that are in the front here and hopefully turn them into something resembling trees. That's the idea anyway, that we will um, discover what it is to be a tree. Yes, exactly. And uh, I'm, I'm um, not sure how this is going to work out, but uh, yeah, I don't even know how I did that one. I don't think I was concentrating at all, which is generally speaking, the best way to go. So I'm just, um, out, as I said, outlining these shapes and then I'm going to put in the trunks and the branches using the same brush or brush pen or watercolour brush or whatever, pencil, doesn't matter, ordinary brush, paint, you name it. And we'll just see where this goes. So I think it's probably a good idea to put in some leaf shapes as well, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. We'll just play around. I think um, there's so much stress and tension in our lives. I know there is in mine, uh, you know, worry about this, that and the other. And uh, we all do it. And our own physical health is not always the best, is it? And so... We don't want to put any more stress on ourselves by trying to produce something fantastic. So let's just play is basically what I'm trying to say. So let's uh, let's put tiny leaves on these ones here. I'm going to, what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to come in with a gold pen and then I will put gold inside these circles and uh, see what happens then. I'm going to pretend these are golden apples. You might be able to hear our cockerel in a minute behind us. He's found his way home after having gone off on an adventure the other day. And he's, um, we're keeping him away from the girls. So he's making a tremendous amount of noise. There he goes. He's fine. He's in the back garden. He's perfectly safe. And that clicking, you can sometimes hear a clicking in the background. I got so habituated to it, I hadn't even noticed it until the other day. Someone said, what's, what's that clicking noise in the background? And what that clicking noise is, is it's the roof. We have a metal roof to the studio here. And um, when the temperature outside changes, which it does fairly often, whenever the sun comes out, it starts to expand and it creaks and clicks and does all that silly stuff. That you can hear in the background, which sounds like the dog um, wandering around, but it isn't. He's outside at the moment. Okay, so we've got that so far. And I've got a Uniball gold pen here. <coughs> and I'm going to do some gold leaves. 
<laughs> Excuse me. They always look quite nice inside the uh, the brown, I think, or any colour on the outside. I could be using paint for this, a uh, Kurataki gold paint or one of the others. I've got Etcher and there's also Colero. Any one of those, you, or there's lots of others as well that you can get. We got our first delivery from Temu today. We decided we would buy a electric pepper grinder. And um, I hadn't bought anything from Temu at all. And so um, we found what looked like a good one on there. I sent off for it. It came in, I think, three days, which is pretty good for France. And um, it was brilliant. Little Four little batteries it has in it and it grinds peppercorns really well because I needed a new one because the one I had had it was taking too much energy to get the pepper out of it and I've always wanted an electric one and this is rather nice it's just stainless steel and white per, uh, clear perspex very good don't have any affiliation with Temu we haven't used it before this is I mean we just started just started to use it a little bit um, because Amazon is not exactly brilliant over here in France. So I'm going to put some um, leaves in dark green now into this one in the front here, just because that's what I thought of. And then, because that will take the gold quite nicely too, if I want to put gold on top of there. This is the kind of thing you can do sitting in front of the television, watching YouTube, you know. Some people have told me, and I think this is great, that they put my videos on and then they do something else completely different while I'm talking in the background, which is quite nice. Seriously, that is quite nice um, to know that I'm like Terry Wogan. I always wanted to be like Terry Wogan. Annie, you'll remember Terry Wogan. I expect you probably met him. <laughs> uh, yes. A floral dance and all that. Um, I wanted to actually talk about, um, uh, it's nothing serious, don't get, don't get worried. I'm just going to talk about something I enjoyed in 1967. And this is particularly directed at English people my age who would have watched the Foresight Saga. Um, with Eric Porter and Nairi Dawn Porter as the uh, main characters. Um, I loved Eric Porter. Seriously, I always have idolised him and uh, found it very difficult to watch that programme uh, again when it came on repeats because he dies in the last episode. So I've only ever watched the last episode once because I couldn't face watching him die twice. Um, aren't we silly? Anyway, there's a lady who has um, managed to resuscitate these old um, serials like Foresight Saga, The Palaces and lots of others. And she's putting them up on YouTube for everyone to watch, which is absolutely marvellous. And she's got some other things there that would be fantastically interesting to anybody who likes old um, TV and actually I think films as well just really good stuff and she's very gifted she's very artistic and she puts together also these montages of photos and uh, video clips and things that are just really fascinating to watch and there's an absolutely beautiful one of Soames and Irene which you must watch set to music and everything so I'll put a link to her channel in the description below so you'll be able to find her if you're interested. Um, I'm going to do some slightly bigger leaves in here. Yeah, um, I can't remember the name of the channel. It's got initials and a number or something. I can't remember. Anyway, I'll put it in the description below. And if you're interested, I think you'll enjoy it. 
for those of you who never saw the Foresight Saga, I'm sorry, it's like I, Claudius, that's the other one that I really liked, around about the same time in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is going to have to have some gold in it too because it looks too harsh if it's just the green. So we put gold on top. Maybe we need some white as well, perhaps. That one doesn't work very well. Let's try this one. Artistro, I think that's better, yes. I keep going back to the signal and thinking, oh, you were the first one I tried, but... Um, I'm sorry, I'm abandoning you now for the Artistro one. You just have to keep building this up, you know? Just keep building and just try and think of different things to do. And eventually it comes, comes right or not. But it's, you can't think, I, this is what makes this, this, you know, I say, oh, relax, but I don't know whether you're the same as me, but I do sometimes find it quite hard to actually take my own advice. And um, it comes the... Uh... You know, it's Wednesday. You know it's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? I think it's Thursday. You know it's Thursday when the Air Force goes over. What was I saying? I can't remember. You just keep building it up. Yeah, you can't, you cannot know what you're going to need to do to make it look pretty until you start. And I have what, the, you could call it stage fright. I don't know if you know what I mean. Um, but that's, I think, the sort of thing that I have. I have this kind of stage fright. But then once I get started, it goes away. So I expect you're the same. Because you just don't know, do you? You just don't know. Um, okay, so there's some trees down the front. I think just to balance that, we need a little bit more white here. And I think probably we're going to have to put one in here too, to balance it a bit. So. And in this one, I think I'll just do go away. There we are. Okay, so then behind my thinking was um, that behind here. So having done the trees in the front, I'm not sure whether to do another layer. I don't think I will. I think I'll start with houses now. And so using the same color, um, we're going to build, build some houses. So we just do something like this. We just put windows in. like that and sort of make it kind of three-dimensional. 
I suppose you could say it was, uh, what's the word? Whimsical, yes, whimsical. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of more color and paint these houses. Just bring a little bit of extra color down. Brown, I think we want dark brown, perhaps. So you could do that. You can just draw if you want. Don't have to color them in. Don't have to paint them, I mean. some chimneys in then you know it's a house don't you if it's got a chimney that does make a difference just anything any kind of combination of windows will do You do lots of tall houses like this, they look like, I don't know, it looks European to me, or Russian or something like that. That could be a church, should we give that big windows? And over here maybe, eh, maybe we want another tree. Something like that. And then perhaps, perhaps in the background, we want some hills, mountains, something like that. I think these brush, watercolour brushes, watercolour brush pens are probably better for painting, uh, for doing this kind of painting. So the background is watercolour and then these brushes, brush pens, they have much more um, precision about them. Bitter chocolate, that's going to be nice and dark, isn't it? So we go around the outside edge of the windows to give it a bit more shadow. This one too, give it three dimensional. We don't want anything to be too precise, just keep it loose. One side of the, uh, let's, let's just do lines like that on that one. Yeah, one side needs to be more in shadow than the other, doesn't it? That gives it the 3D effect.
Um, let's have some, what about some nice little uh, bright orange perhaps? Leaves over here. And um, let's do some nice, some more trees in the background. Um, let's make this one pinkish. over here. So I think need to be darkened a little bit. So perhaps down the bottom here. No problem where it's dry, but where it's a little bit wet, sometimes you get a little bit of a problem with the with the white paint in these pens. Yeah, it's wet there, so that's not terribly clever. There's the cockerel again. Okay, well, I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so I don't like what I've done at all. Um, so I'm going to paint over it, draw over it with a pen, and then we'll see. So I really am not happy at all with this. So there's a very good possibility this will never be shown. But we'll see. Because I don't believe in giving in. Apparently, I don't believe in giving in. I'm not sure whether this pen is going to work. 
You know, this is the one where you press hard and you get a wider line and you press less hard and you get a thinner line. Well, this one seems to be getting a little bit worn out, so I'm going to try another one. And we'll see. It might have, it might have been better if I had um, gone to the dip pen. I think probably. I think this is most likely going to turn out to be a complete disaster. But not a disaster because everything that we do is worth doing. A disaster. What is a disaster? For goodness sake, who knows? Uh, I'm trying to come down much, much, much heavier because I don't think I like these light lines after all. So I, I don't know. It's um. It's quite hard to paint and talk at the same time. I think probably, maybe I'm getting too old. We'll see. Paper's slightly damp, so it's not necessarily responding the way it should. I'm just literally emphasizing all the lines. So we've got brown lines underneath and now black lines on top. I think um, on the original, the one that I did originally, originally we had, what did we have? We had strange skeletal trees that were done like this. Very sort of um maybe we need to go up further. Uh, what, what, what would you call this? Graphic?
linear. Elemental. Maybe some white on top. Can you make it work? What's the matter, Oriel? He's acting as if he just saw a bird. But I don't think he did. Okay, well, looks like that is coming to an end. I don't know, maybe. Maybe outlining quite a bit of it in white might. Maybe that's what it needs. So some white and some black. That's interesting. The white definitely fades down when it, as it dries, it sort of soaks into the paper. So if you want it whiter, you have to come back again. Well, now I really am going to let it dry and see what it looks like when it's dry. And so this was what you might call a nerve wracking relaxation. And uh, have a look in the description below if you're interested in following up my recommendation. Uh, of the channel on here that has the old. She's aiming to put up a thousand videos, this lady, and it's very interesting. I don't think she's got ads on her channel at all, so that's nice. I'm just trying to look up, see what it's called. AMT 2.0, that's what it's called, AMT 2.0. Right, okay, there we are. Trees, houses, more trees, interesting uh, thing. <laughs> I don't know whether I like it or not. What do you think? 
think if you come in quite close, it's not so bad. So we'll see. See what you think. Let me know. It's not what you call high art, is it? Anyway, I'll let you go and I'll be back soon with something else. Bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.